Aloha. Welcome to Jordan's Journal. I'm Representative Joe Jordan, and I have as my guest today um, Representative Ichiyama. Thank you Hello. very much for having me on the show. Yes, thank you for joining me. Um, I'm a freshman, and you're one of my freshman buddies. Yes. So um, this show is going to kind of go around being freshmen, and we're on the same committee as finance and some things that we're doing through there. So why don't you give everybody a little bit of background about who you are and what district you represent. Sure. Thank you, Joe, so much for having me on the show. It's really mm -hmm. nice to be here. Um, I'm Linda Ichiyama. I represent the 31st House District. I was just elected last year, and uh, my district includes the neighborhoods of Salt Lake, Mauna Loa, and uh, Aliamanu. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, and committees you sit on? I know we sit on finance We together. both sit on finance together. Um, I am currently the vice chair of the transportation committee. I also sit on labor and um, public safety and military affairs. Wow. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I sit on the opposite bracket. Right. Yeah. yeah. So can we talk about finance a little bit? What was your thoughts going into finance committee and what you kind of learned and where we'll be going with finance. Sure. Um, I think that being on the finance committee is a great learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, as new legislators, you know, we don't often have a lot of opportunities to really delve into the process and understand what's going on. But finance, I think, is a great way um, for us to learn about what the state does mm -hmm. um, yeah. because we sit through marathon hearings going sometimes oh. into the wee hours of the morning. Yes. And, um, you know, we really get a chance to look at all the bills, the major bills coming through, um, and talk about, uh, you know, the state budget, mm -hmm. uh, which is really the, the, one of the biggest pieces um, of what we do here. Um, and it really gives you a bird's eye view of state government. So I yeah, think it's it been a really good learning experience. Uh -huh. Did you have that expectation of the long hours and the commitment for finance? Uh, yes, I, I sort of did, um, having worked around the legislature mm -hmm. um, prior to being in office. Um, I, had, uh, I had understood coming into this, you know, how, uh, how much time it takes. Mm -hmm. I think until you actually are there, though, and sitting in that chair um, and actually being there, listening to all the testimony and asking all those difficult questions, it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to say what it's really like. Yeah. But I do enjoy it. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, it was. You know, you get into committee and you think, oh, okay, we'll be done in an hour or two. And, yeah. You no, know, we have. When you've got like seven or eight agendas for that day. Yeah. 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 And especially for you with such a, such a long drive home. Yeah. You know, it can be very grueling. But yeah. it's, um, it's part of the process. It and is. It's an important part yeah, of the process. It's, it's an important part of the process. And, and hearing all those different constituents or um, entities or departments coming in and expressing their thoughts on all these measures. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty grueling. You know? Yeah. And it's like, but it, I mean, it's awesome. It's a great learning experience. Yes. And it's an awesome learning experience. So with finance, you know, we have the opportunity to hear from departments and, you know, what their budgets are being proposed as and why they need certain things. So even that was part of the process outside of just committees. Sure, right. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, outside of the work that we actually do in the committee, I think um, it's important for people to understand the overall budget process. Mm -hmm. You know, um, beginning from when the governor submits his proposals to us, um, probably uh, this coming December, or early January, mm -hmm. and then we have uh, budget briefings from each department, yeah. you know, hearing what their needs are. Um, what they uh, expect to do within the coming uh, year. Then we put that all together, right, uh -huh. after those long, long hearings, yeah. and then we um, send it over to the Senate side, um, and then they have their own hearings and their own discussions, and then it goes into conference, yep. usually in about April, um, and we try to come up with a final version by May, and then it goes uh -huh. up to the governor for signature. Yeah. It's a very, very long, detailed process. Yeah, and that's that's only the budget part. <laughs> yes, that doesn't include yeah. the budget bills. It's just yeah, the budget it, itself. Yeah, then it doesn't talk about all the budget bills that we have these marathon hearings for, and then all the resos and other marathon hearings, yeah. and yeah, yeah. it's like these different processes going on. And, yeah, but I think yeah. it's good that we have, um, you know, people who are willing to take the time out of their 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 busy mm -hmm. schedules, their work, their jobs, their families to come down to the Capitol and talk oh, yeah. to us. Yeah. Um, I think that's invaluable mm -hmm. is to hear, you know, um, what's happening on a day-to-day, -day, on the ground level, 
um, I think it's it's so important that people take that opportunity to participate um, and to really um, contribute and provide their their ideas and thoughts. So yeah, it is, and you know, yeah, even if it goes to ten or eleven o'clock at night. I mean, those individuals are out there waiting. They yeah. patiently wait. They do. Even though Very agenda patiently. Should have been like three hours ago. You yeah. Know? So, I, mean, I give them a lot of credit. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's it's heart wrenching to see them. You know, tired and sleepy, but yeah, there's their dedication also. Mm -hmm. um, along with finance, we do have these opportunities to go out and learn more about projects that we've supported in the past or might be coming before us um, or departments. So those are considered site visits. So. Right, right. During the interim, um, mm -hmm. the finance committee often takes time to, um, like you said, visit different areas of interest to the committee and learn more about projects. And it's great to be actually there in person and really seeing what's going on versus just hearing yeah. it secondhand in a committee hearing. Yeah. Um, so one of the site visits that we went to um, was in your home district on the leeward side yeah. at the beginning of October, which is really, really neat. Mm -hmm. um, we started out the day with Ma'o Organic Farms which was really fun. Got yeah. to talk to um, some of the college kids out there that are working. Um, and I think their, their whole, um, I'm not sure what it's called, their scholar advoc like scholar program, mm -hmm. yeah, where they program. give kids money to go to LCC and get their degree mm -hmm. and still work um, and pay their way through school. It's yeah. really amazing. That's a, an amazing project, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was, I, I guess, come to us knowing now, I guess they break it down into like regions of, of Oahu and then maybe outer islands. So yeah, that was an area that we went to on, on the western region right. that we worked with on um, Representative Har and Awana mm -hmm. on setting up some site visits. Yeah. Right, right. I think after Ma'o Farms, we went to um, the new Croc Center, the Salvation Army yes. Ray Croc Center, which mm -hmm. is beautiful. Yeah. It's a gorgeous building, mm -hmm. two swimming pools, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's going to be a great asset to the whole leeward um, side of Oahu and what the potential is going to be out there. And I think the state had given them a little bit of funding. The majority of it came from um, Mrs. Croc, who is right. the, the wife of the founder of McDonald's. Yeah. Right. But I mean, that, that even was very educational for us, you know, and what potential they can provide for you know our our communities mm -hmm. and going forward with you know sports leagues or or big huge meetings I mean it was impressive yeah yeah their their auditorium is also ah, very impressive I yes. think that's going to be a great resource mm -hmm. for the leeward coast yeah and I think what also struck me is the fact that when we went there and, and we saw the the building and the design and planning um, was the effort that w went into the planning you know, um, they told us that when Mrs. Croc made the donation for these Croc centers, she told them that she wanted to make sure that the kids who went to those centers would have no reason to be jealous of any kids yeah. any place else. That's correct. Yeah. And to me, that's really the right message that we're mm -hmm. sending our kids, that they're valuable yeah. and that they deserve a beautiful facility like yeah. that. I know it was, you know, they have a huge auditorium that can, I think, hold up to almost 600 people. Mm -hmm. And then when she built, they had built the, um, the sports facility, which is the basketball courts, right. and then also th putting the thought process to have like little spaces so people can house or sleep right, over. The dorms, you know, for, for teens from neighbor yeah, island. Yeah, teens from neighbor island. I thought that was just awesome. Yeah, you know. really a lot of uh, thinking went into the mm -hmm. project. And then I'm also really excited about what they're doing with the um, preschool buildings that they have oh, built. Yes. You know, very um, green building, mm -hmm. using PV, using um, energy conservation mm -hmm. measures to make sure that those buildings are energy yeah. efficient. That was a that was a beautiful project. Mm -hmm. you know, I know we're only a sliver of their funding, but it, it's a beautiful project. Mm -hmm. And then I think we went out to another site that same day. Was, yes, that's right. Yeah. We went to um, the new Department of Hawaiian Homelands building, mm -hmm. um, and the chair, um, Alapaki Nahalea, was very gracious in showing mm -hmm. us around. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah. And, and that, was, that was one of the other opportune times that we got to meet pretty much the whole department and go through mm -hmm. the whole Hawaiian Homes um, department and, and see what they provide for those, the beneficiaries out mm -hmm. there. And, you know, even, even with you know, DHHL, they made that commitment to move out to the second city, which is mm -hmm. Kapolei. Um, as a government agency and help support the future building of that right, area. Right. Like and they're right in the middle of one of their newer subdivisions too. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Which I think is really convenient. Uh, it was very interesting to see the plans that they had for the development around the area, yeah. um, including that, that new huge mall shopping oh, complex. Oh yeah. And then yeah. all that future housing that they had mm -hmm. planned as well. Yeah, I think that's going to become the next largest um, 
village of um, Hawaiian homelands. Mm -hmm. I think that will become our largest ones in the state once it's completely mm -hmm. finished. Uh, it was pretty awesome to do that. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, a really good opportunity too, to sit down with the chair and talk about his vision for the department oh, and yeah. the needs of the beneficiaries and how yeah. they're going to move forward to meet those needs. Mm -hmm. And it was, I mean, I thought it was great because it also presented him a casual time where he can, you know, be expressive of what he may be coming in in 2012 mm -hmm. with some of his agendas or, you know, wants or visions for the department. I think that was really great yeah. to sit in that setting outside of maybe a formal hearing, you know, hearing. or procedure. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was no, really great. That's one of the benefits of the site visits is that we get to see firsthand um, what the what kind of conditions people are working in and you know what they envision moving forward and how we can best support them in the future. Yeah, I thought it was interesting because when we really go on these site visits, finance really doesn't give you any clues as to why we may be visiting these particular areas. And it's kind of interesting to see that once we get there and after you visited the site and heard or seen everything, then you kind of like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, is this something that, you know, our dollars is going to the best of its ability here? Or is this something that might need more dollars to help perpetuate what they're doing out here because it's so good and that that's that's what I find very interesting on these mm -hmm. site visits it's like wow you, you definitely know. learn a lot you yeah yeah you do and being able to ask questions you know to the people who may not have the time to come down and testify because they're you know running their business at oh, like yeah. Ma'o Farms mm -hmm. or you know they're they're in a very in a very far geographical location where they may not be able to commute into town as easily mm -hmm. So I think it makes a difference that we go out to them and um, get to see what they're working on. Yeah. yeah. So I know we were kind of talking about maybe the site visits on Oahu, mm -hmm. but we do. We also get on the little plane and yes. we go to outer islands. Yeah, and yeah. And I know we just went to a couple outer islands. We did um, do a couple neighbor island trips. So we went to um, the Big Island mm -hmm. and then we also went to Maui and Molokai. Yes. Um, and I think it was about a month ago that the Finance Committee was also on Kauai. Yeah. Yeah. Those are really good trips. So what did you get on going to the outer islands? And um, let's see. Well, I think for me, um, the takeaway from the Big Island was really the innovation that they have going on there. Mm -hmm. We visited a number of really interesting, um, prospering businesses. You know, even during these difficult economic times, oh, yeah. there are these businesses and companies who have been innovative and creative and found new ways to, to be competitive in a global market. Mm -hmm. um, take, for example, uh, Big Island Carbon, which is recently oh. featured at the APEC yeah. um, conference. You know, they are taking um, what's considered waste, right? Those yep. used macadamia nut shells yep. that would have been thrown away, yep. they're burning it, turning into active carbon yep. to be used in high technologies like um, cell phones or electric yeah. cars. And I think it's that ingenuity that's really going to keep Hawaii um, moving forward in the next mm -hmm. century. Yeah, that, that kind of cutting edge. Exactly. I was very impressed with that. Or maybe when we went down to look at the algae development. And, Over at Nelha. Uh, and using different sources of algae that are actually found here in the islands and being able to grow them in an environment where you can extract that, that the oil. Oils, and right. It's really, I don't think a lot of people understand all that stuff. and. It's very impressive that we kind of are like on the cutting edge here in Hawaii. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. At Noha, the, um, the acronym is slipping my mind, but it's right outside the Kona Airport. Yes. Um, but it's um, a, uh, a facility, a laboratory for um, businesses that have ideas around ocean technology mm -hmm. and using um, cold water and thermal conversion either to create mm -hmm. energy or to grow abalone oh, yeah. or to you know support a uh, explorations academy charter school yeah. um, all these different ways that we can use our ocean resources our natural resources um, to keep people here to grow successful um, high quality high paying jobs yeah. and then we just were back from Maui and right. then up in Kula and what they're doing up there with the different um, um, farming resources. That, mm -hmm. was, that was pretty impressive. Yeah, it was. And I think it, um, what was really important uh, hearing from the farmers on Maui is the importance of water uh, on Maui and both in Molokai. Uh -huh. You know, the need for watershed management yep. and for um, careful use of our water resources. Yeah. Yeah. And making sure that we're able to support them from a state level yeah. um, to help them be successful. Yeah, I, I know on Maui, you know, listening to the farmers, and these, these are actually young farmers, I mm -hmm. mean, people under 40 years old. And 
how their issues are trying to make a living at farming and mm -hmm. still being able to produce a great quality product that remains here in right. Hawaii and how do we continue to support you know the purchase of that in our economies. Mm -hmm. I, I was very impressed with the different products that has grown up in Maui and well, yeah, they had the hydroponic farm, for yeah. example, mm -hmm. where all of the lettuces, the watercress, the uh -huh. mixed greens, yeah. all grown hydroponically. Yeah. You know, you don't need to plant anything in the ground. They're yeah. all on trays. Yeah, it's all above you know, all ground. Lined and up. Um, and it's perfect weather in Kula, you know, mm -hmm. clear and cold. Yeah. And uh, the lettuce is delicious. Yeah, <laughs> so it, was, it was awesome. Yeah. And then to know that, you know, one of his larger vendors is Costco. Right. And, you know, to have even those big box mainland vendors purchasing our local produce and being able to sell it to the general public that doesn't have access on Maui, you know, comes to Oahu. Mm -hmm. that, that was really eye-opening to see, yes, this interstate commerce and then being able to go out to Hana and watch the Myconia. Right, the Maui's um, Invasion Species yes, Council and um, was very helpful. How important helpful. that is to, you know, make sure that we protect our rainforests for our aquifer, aquifer and right. I guess people just, some people just don't really kind of hear all that stuff and Mm -hmm. these little bitty things and then being able to go over to Molokai, mm -hmm. you know, and see the challenges that, you know, daily commuters or weekly commuters taking the ferry. Back and forth. Yeah. yeah I could see yes, why our chair. Yes, 90-minute ferry ride. Yes. 90-minute, yeah. experience. It was definitely, choppy, yeah. definitely experience and, you know, you feel for individuals that have to take that, that ferry back and forth from you live on Molokai and have to work on Maui or, or come back to Maui to get your your big box items, take them back to Molokai, because certainly going to Molokai, you begin to realize how much they don't have. Right, know. right. And I think they're, they've been very resourceful with mm -hmm. what they do have yeah. and promoting their own strengths. Mm -hmm. um, like the way they've been able to build their veteran center oh, uh, yeah, that's yeah. coming up soon, as well as the, um, the new community health center yeah. over at the old uh, Pauhana Inn. Yeah, yeah. I, I was pretty impressed with that. I mean, they got the, uh, a normal hospital facility, and now they've got a community um, health center that's going to be coming up. and all their resources. I mean, even they have um, farmers there, too. I mean, mm -hmm. it's pretty impressive mm -hmm. with the resources they do have. And, and looking at, you know, even their community college, I was just totally impressed with their community college there. Yes, their dean's doing a great job. Really, and, and their three-way communication with allowing them to have the ability to have what you can have on Maui or Big Island or Oahu. Right, in, the in video, teaching classes, video classes. Video classes. I learning. was pretty impressed with that. I yeah. was like, wow. And, but I mean, going out there, this is what you get to see. I mean, you, you don't hear that in the building. You don't hear that in the conference room. Mm -hmm. You know, it's when you can go out and look at these different sites and be able to, wow, it's pretty impressive. It is, it is. Um, and I think also, too, being able to talk to some of the students, mm -hmm. you know, who are there and taking those classes and what their needs are. So having these um, finance site visits, and I give a lot of credit to our chair and yes. to the finance support mm -hmm. staff for arranging everything yeah. um, and helping us, you know, helping to choose really interesting places for us to visit, mm -hmm. um, really, I think, have been a, a very educational experience. Yeah, it has. And then, you know, making sure everybody makes the planes or gets in the van right. to get to the windward side or the leeward side. Right. 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 Yeah, it's I. I Logistically, it can be challenging. It can be, you know. But I, I also look at these site visits. This is a great way for us, as some of us as newly legislators, with some of the old timers, to get to know each other a little bit more and and to be able to to hear more about their communities mm -hmm. and, and or their committees. And I, I think that's been really educational for me too. Yeah, to build I think up so. those relationships and to and spend more time with our colleagues outside yeah. of just committee hearings. Yeah. yeah. Or or to go like to Kauai and have those representatives from there be able to show show us these areas or mm -hmm. to go to Maui and have them be able to show, well, here this is what we talk about all the time. And I, that right. was very impressive. Right. Really right. impressive. I, I, it's kind of like I call it like team bonding. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> really way. nice. Yeah, yeah, we we do. We have the, these these abilities to get to know each of us on a personal level too a little bit more and be able to feel freer to be, t be able to talk in committees and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, that's and true. I, I think that's been a real great blessing you know and I think it is a, a strain on the finance 
committee staff to kind of arrange all these things for us, but I think they're excellent. I, I think they did a great job. They pulled off what they needed us to kind of be cognizant of and mm -hmm. where we'll be going next year. Yes. You know, and, and it is, sometimes it's heart wrenching to go to some of these departments and see, you know, the cutbacks we've gone over prior to us getting here and where some of the level of service is, you know, less than what it was before and how do we move forward with less and still mm -hmm. being able to do the same level and you know that's challenging you know and right. for us going forward trying to say how do we balance things yeah right really yeah, how do we kind of balance things out and that's going to be kind of interesting I think that's going to be our, our continuing challenge yeah you know next really session good. is looking at um, how do we craft a budget, how do we craft a plan, a financial plan mm -hmm. that will allow us to continue to provide those critical services and mm -hmm. that people demand that the government provides. Yeah. I think that's the tough balance. Yeah. Um, what I found really interesting was I guess you kind of get kind of siloed into your district or your your section of the island and it was really interesting that when I went to the West Oahu community mm -hmm. campus that's going to be built out in Kapolei that they have a relationship built with Ma'o which is in my community and then when we went up to the big island up in Hilo that they also have a relationship with West Oahu and I, I, I found it so fascinating that you know wow you know some of my kids could possibly go up to UH Hilo mm -hmm. or some of my kids can go to UH right. West Oahu and it, it was just and how these different businesses and non nonprofit agencies work together, not only for these one areas, but actually as the islands as a whole. Statewide. Yeah, it was kind of really interesting. And I felt a kind of a kinship when we went to Molokai with their um, community health center that they're, they've been around since 04, but now they've got a place or a home. And, you know, Wainai Comp has been in my community for like the last 30 years. And they, they said, oh, yeah, they were just here like the day before you guys got here. And again, that kinship and how do we all work together, I, I find it really fascinating. That and I think it's, it's more than just working together. It's also mm -hmm. learning from each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, what's been successful at UH Hilo in their College of Agriculture and how yeah. can we make that successful at UH Oahu? Yeah. I think it's those kinds of experiences where we're... We're not reinventing the wheel, but we're yeah. moving forward based mm -hmm. on what everybody else has done. I think yeah. it's really going to be um, a key to success. Yeah, it was a really, it was really impressive. So I was like, wow, all these pieces do kind of fit together, and mm -hmm. us being able to take these site visits allows us the opportunity to say, hey, what, what, can, what can we learn from over here mm -hmm. that could be applied over here, or right. what were our mistakes over here? So we go forward, not making those common mistakes, mistake, mistakes again, and. It's just, I find it really impressive. Actually, yeah. I have a really good example of that that I brought with me today. Oh, you did? Yes. It's the Adopt a Beehive program from University of um, Hawaii at Hilo uh, oh, College yeah. of Agriculture. And it's a partnership with Alan Wong's. Um, but basically what they do is they have these beehives out at oh, yeah. Panaeva, uh, which make delicious honey, uh, local honey. and. Um, Basically, what people can do is they can support the beehive program at the University of Hawaii mm -hmm. at Hilo by adopting one of these beehives, and you get updates on how your beehive is doing and, oh, yeah. and um, how much honey it's making and what the students are doing. But the, the students at UH Hilo are learning how to be beekeepers. And yeah. bees, mm -hmm. as we learned, are so yeah. important They're to really our local important. Agri yeah. agriculture. Mm -hmm. We don't have produce if we don't have bees. That's right. So um, yeah. it's a really important program and a really important yeah. part of agriculture. So. Ah, thanks. I mean, I, yeah, I remember when we went up there and they said, well, hey, we're going to keep you in the vans. Yes. But the students are going to be able to show you the hives. And with their all the bee suits. Yes. Yes, all completely covered. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't I mean, want to roll down a window. <laughs> they pull up these things and there's just like thousands of Bees. Yeah, it was very impressive. It was very I was cool. like, I'm glad we were on the inside of the van. I was, and I was like, I, and you're talking about students that right. are like 18 to 24 years old, and you're like, wow, right. impressive. And they were so thrilled with doing that, and and then the different products, and you know, and if 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 you don't have a student going up there, if you don't have a relative going up there, then we can certainly promote the program and help these students by by adopting it. I think Alan, Alan Wong has adopted one. Yep. I think 
uh, Senator Nishihara has adopted one. A number of the Big Island delegations yeah. have adopted one. Yeah, it's really yeah. interesting. And so it's a great I program. was like totally impressed, especially with you know the issue that we had with um, the vermite and now this little beetle that's mm -hmm. affecting all the bees. And it is very important. You mm -hmm. know, and the bees also help with our rainforest, and it's like it's really important. But I totally enjoyed that one. Yes, yeah, that was a good it was, trip. That was really a great trip. You know, I was learned like, a lot from from the folks at University of Hawaii at Hilo. Yeah, yeah. And I was so impressed. I think they they have like 130 acres mm -hmm. farm, and they're not only looking at bees, but they're also looking at the albizia. How can we use that f to produce food for animals raised here? You know, even though albizia is detrimental to our forest, mm -hmm. you know, and how, how it, it's, it's impressive what they're doing up there and mm -hmm. the research. Um, I was totally amazed with UH right. Hilo. Now I can see why so many people promote it. Right, <laughs> right. Really and awesome. there's a lot of lessons I think that UH West Oahu could take from that oh, yeah. in building their programs, and, just like you were saying. Yeah, and going forward, you know, and that's what we hope we can all do. Well, mm -hmm. I think we're going to run out of time pretty soon. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of short and sweet. Did well, you want to say anything particular? or? No, no, it's great being on the show. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I really want to thank you. I know I've been trying to get a couple more people on here. So thanks. Thanks for the, the input on finance, and thanks for being my freshman buddy. Oh. It's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. As women legislators, you've got to stick together. That's right. We definitely yeah. have to stick together. So I guess we're going to end this. So I'd like to... Thank you for joining us today. Again, this is Representative Ichiyama, and you represent the 35th, 31st. 31st District. Yes. And thank you for being my guest today. Well, thank you very much yeah. for having me on the show. Um, okay. Aloha. I'd like to tell you thank you for joining our show today, and we'll look forward to seeing you soon.